Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this cool slide-in animation in Blender 4.2 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So first start with set up the blend file. So let's get rid of the default stuff. So press A to select all, then press X to delete it. So in this video, I'm going to use a Milk Makeup Jelly Blush model I made. But you can use your own model to this animation, of course. So let's set up the two models in this video. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to Edit, then click on Preferences. Go to Input and then check Emulate Numpad. So select your object. Press Shift plus D to duplicate. Then press G plus X to move it to the right on the X axis. Select the right object and press R plus 180 to rotate it 180 degrees. Then press N to unhide the sidebar. And then select the left object and change the X location to minus 1. Then select the right object and change the X location to 1. So first animate the left object. So first start with changing the end frame to 70. And then go to frame 1 and then press G plus Z and move it down on the Z axis. And then zoom out a little bit so we can see what we have. And then right click over the Z location and click on insert single keyframe. And this little orange thing is a keyframe. And then go to the frame 10. And then press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. And then right click to insert a single keyframe. And then go to frame 60. And then press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. And then right click to insert a single keyframe. And last, go to frame 70. And then press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. And then right click to insert a single keyframe. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And now let's animate the other object. So first go to the frame 1. And then press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. And then right click to insert a single keyframe. And then go to the frame 10. And then press G plus Z and move it down on the Z axis and then right click to insert a single keyframe, and then go to frame 60, and then press G plus Z and move it down on the Z axis, and then right click to insert a single keyframe, and last go to frame 70, and then press G plus Z and move it down on the Z axis, and then right click to insert a single keyframe, and don't forget to save the blend file so we don't lose anything. So let's play the animation again by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks very good. And now let's set up the camera. So press Shift plus A to add a camera. And then press 0 on your numpad to get to the camera view. And then go to the camera settings. And then change the focal length to 125 millimeters. And then press G plus Y to move it back on the Y axis so we can see our objects. And then here on the left, unfold the Move tab and change the Y location to something you like. So to see how our camera view looks, go to frame 10, for example. I think this looks very good. But remember, we can always change it later on, and then unfold the viewport display. And then change the passpar 2 to 0 0.8, so it shows a little bit of the viewport. And then unfold the composition guide. And then check the thirds and center for some guidelines. Press Z to switch shading mode and select render mode. So, another thing I like to do, when I know I'll have many objects, I often change my workspace a little, open a new window, and then change the editor type to properties, and then, of course, close the other properties window, and your new workspace will look like this. So I'm rending in cycles, but if you want to render in Eevee, you can skip this part. So go to the render settings and change the render engine to cycles. And if you have a GPU device, go and change to that for better rendering. And change the noise threshold to 0.1 so you can render faster. And I like to render my videos with 300 as max samples, but you can choose whatever you like, then unfold the color management. So for this video, I choose to render it in filmic, but you can choose whatever you like and seems best for your scene. And then change the look to medium high contrast. Now let's set up the HDRI. So go to world, click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. And like you see, our viewport is purple pinkish color, but we don't want that. So to fix that, click on open and choose you HDRI image. In the description, I linked the HDRI I used, so download that. As you see, we have set up our HDRI image. Let's move to the next part. So let's doing the fun stuff and animate the camera, and then go to frame one. Right-click over the Y location and click on Insert Single Keyframe, and then press R to rotate the camera to the minus on the Y axis, and then right-click to insert a single keyframe, and then go to the frame 10 and then press G plus Y to move the camera to the minus on the Y axis. 
and then right-click to insert a single keyframe, and then go to frame 60, and then press G plus Y again to move the camera to the minus a little bit more on the Y axis, and then right-click to insert a single keyframe, and last go to frame 70, and then press R again to rotate the camera a little bit more on the Y axis, and then right-click to insert a single keyframe, and don't forget to save the blend file so we don't lose anything. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So let's move to the next part. So now let's set up the camera focus. So first start with press shift plus A to add an empty plane axis. Press 3 on your numpad to get to the side view. And then press G plus Y to move it on the Y axis, and then press Control to snap it on the viewport. And for some reason, my empty object is not in my scene collection. So just drag it into the main collection. And by the way, I just switch position between the properties and the outliner. And then press F2 to rename it to camera focus. And for Mac users like me, press Fn first and then F2. So select the camera and go to the camera settings. And then check the depth of field and change the focus object to the camera focus. And then press 0 on your numpad to get to the camera view. And then change the f-stop to something you like and something that suits your scene. I chose f-stop 1.2 because it is what I have for my result video. Now let's make a scene. Then press shift plus A to add a plane. Then press R plus X plus 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. And then press S plus 10 to scale it by 10. And then press G plus Y to move the plane on the y-axis. And then go to the material selection here to the right. And then rename the plane to backdrop. So click on New, and then change the base color to some color that matches your scene. For me, it's going to be some sort of pink. So now let's set up the lights. So this is a test to add the lighting part to my tutorials. So if you like that and want it to continue like this video, so press Shift plus A to add an area light. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. And then press R plus minus 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis. And press G plus X to move it on the x-axis and then press S plus 4 to scale it by 4. Press 7 on your numpad to get to top view, and then press G plus Y to move it somewhere like this, and then press R to rotate it, and then press G plus X to move it somewhere like this, and then press R again to rotate the light again, and then press 0 on your numpad to get to the camera view, and then change the power to 200 watts, and then change from square to rectangle, and then here on the viewport, scale the light just like this, and then change the powers to 350 watts instead, and then go to the top view again. And then press Shift plus D to duplicate, and then press G plus X to move it. Then press R to rotate like this. And now go to Camera View to see what we got. And under the Nodes tab, click on Use Nodes. And beside the color, click on the yellow dot and click on Black Body. So the black body is the temperature of the light. So that means we can control if we want it warm or cold. So the lower the number is, the warmer will the light be. And the higher the number is, the colder will the light be. So go and change the temperature to 2,500. Also change the power to 400 watts instead. And then add another area light, and then press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. Then press S plus 5 to scale it by 5. And then change the power to 500 watts. And then add another plane, and then press G plus Z to move it down on the Z axis. And then press S plus 4 to scale it by 4. And here on the Material Selection, click on New. And then click on the Shading here on the menu. So delete the principled BSDF node. And then add an Emission node. And then plug the Emission into the surface, and then change the Strength to 3. And then go to the top view again. So select the right light and press Shift plus D to duplicate. And then press R plus 180. And then press G plus Z two times to move it diagonally. And then do the same and press Y two times. And then go to the camera view to see what we got. And then change from rectangle to square. And then chenag the temperature to 5600. And last press S plus 2 to make the light double so big. I think the light is a little too big, so I changed the scale to 6 instead. So if you like that, I added my light setup to this tutorial and want me to continue with that, like this video, so I know. And here is my results. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like my tutorial. And if you do a video of this animation, go and publish that on Instagram and tag me, amalin.mpeg4. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.